In parts 1 and 2 of the laundry room transformation, I shared with you how we removed all of the cool grey floor tile to lay down a really beautiful yet ambitious design of a herringbone travertine with a border detail and a braid transition into the kitchen. But after grouting it, I was in shock because it looked so stunning. I patched up the hole that was leading into the bathroom, removed the upper cabinetry, and painted the entire room schoolhouse white from Pharaoh and Ball. A portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by LG. Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are finishing up the laundry room. Everything that you just saw that I kind of recapped before this was what we've already done to the space. Now, something that you actually have not seen is this trim that's on the wall right here. And that is because I actually had the stairwell painted by my incredible painter, Pio. He's the one who painted the house. And when I had the stairwell painted, because I painted like the room itself, just with one coat to see an idea of the color, but I just knew I could not paint this like 25 foot tall staircase that leads to the exterior. But the color, which is Schoolhouse White from Farrow and Ball is just perfection. It is so stunning. It's like a vanilla milkshake in here. Like it is just such a beautiful creamy color. And the color's probably looking a little more yellow right now because you might be thinking to yourself, where's the cabinet? Well, the cabinet is actually downstairs at the moment. Okay, hear me out for a second. I was downstairs last night, we had a couple of friends over and I was walking through the hallway and I remembered the Architectural Digest bookcase that I created, that Billy bookcase that I did with the rounded edges on it. And I thought to myself, what if I put doors on this? Because the height of it was what I really loved when I saw it downstairs. And I, ha I still have it, like it's been downstairs in the hallway, just pushed up against the wall. I knew I wanted to keep this bookcase and use it somewhere in the house. So that probably gives you a better idea of the color in the room. And I love this bookcase. It's such a cool one. It has these rounded edges. So I'm bringing this in, but I actually went to Ikea yesterday and picked up these doors here. And these are the Oxberg doors that are meant for the Billy bookcase. And it is such a main focal from the kitchen. I just feel like this kind of meshes a little more with the kitchen. And the other hutch that I created, I adore it. I absolutely love it. But it, I'm going to be putting it in my art studio room downstairs or just like my own personal studio where I work on projects because I want it to be kind of like a project that I continuously work on. And I'd like to add more to it. So that's kind of my thoughts. We're just gonna try it. You know, we're gonna try it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I thought the doors would be a nice addition on here. adding these new doors on, I actually realized that the wood color was not the same as the original, and that's because the original is sun damaged. I had it in front of a very sunny window in my previous apartment for quite a while, and when I put this pull wrap in, as you can see, none of the tones are matching up, but I'm kind of feeling like I might be able to make it work and match them up somehow, so for the time being, we are sticking with this. Now this light fixture here is not an original fixture, it's like a Lowe's cheap kind of just quick rental fixture that they added um, prior to selling a space. So I do want to swap this out. I actually found one on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, here is the light fixture and I hope you can see the color of it. I found this on Marketplace for $80. It was probably like an hour drive away, but I picked it up on the weekend last weekend. A really, really nice tone and I feel like replacing this light I really like the scale of this light and somewhat of the shape, so I tried to find something that sort of channeled it, but also brought the slightest bit of a modern edge. The light's almost on the verge of being too low. Now our cabinet doors, which is also a nice thing, they open perfectly, so those are still Great, and I need to get light bulbs for the light. There's only one in there right now, um, and it's like a white light bulb, so I wanna get some warm bulbs for there. Today is an exciting day! The washer and dryer are being delivered shortly from LG, which I am so excited about! It is like the star of the show, you guys. I mean, the washer and dryer is the star of any laundry room, so. Dude, they're actually installing it for me, which I'm so excited about, so should be here shortly. Guys, look 
how incredible this looks in the laundry room. These are my new washer and dryer. I'm like falling over. These look beyond. I could not have even expected them to look so good in here. They also fit perfectly. This washer and dryer was kindly gifted from LG, which I am so excited about. I'm gonna put the proper name of them up on the screen for you guys. I actually got the incredible opportunity to visit their lighthouse factory in Tennessee last month, and it was probably one of my favorite experiences being a content creator, I'd say, because I got to actually see the production of how they make these, and it is beyond, like, anything you'd ever imagine. The technology, the equipment, the people, the space that they have to produce these washer and dryers is unreal so essentially the lighthouse factory it is actually almost all fully automated so lg uses these things called agvs which are automated guided vehicles to help in the production of their machines and that's because the creation of these machines is actually pretty dangerous so they use people for quality control and also to make sure the automation process of creating the machines runs really smoothly every single tiny little detail of their washers and dryers are not only seen by the ai to even see the tiniest of like hairline and perfections but then also looked over by an actual human eye just to make sure that it's visually all correct and perfect from creating the drum to casting adding chords dials and additional elements these robots are creating these with virtually zero imperfections when i was looking for a washing machine for the space i knew i wanted to mix both form and function and i feel like lg really does that perfectly because the functionality of this machine is just beyond with all the different features such as their ai wash and dry which uses advanced sensors to detect fabric texture load size and soil level to automatically select the perfect settings for you but also the form of this piece it is so beautiful it has such a chic and sophisticated look to it i'll say and it does come in a few other colorways as well but wait until you hear this so they have an easy dispense on some of their models which is on mine and this actually dispenses the detergent and fabric softener for you and you can fill it up and it can do up to 31 loads of laundry with one easy fill which i think is crazy you can also use their think q app to start your laundry while you're out shopping for example check the remaining cycle time or even get notifications on your smartphone they also put everything through so many different tests i got to see all the different cycles that they run on them so when you're purchasing a washer and dryer like this you guys like you know you are absolutely getting high quality a tested machine also they came and installed this so quickly and did such a great job it looks perfect in here they brought it up the stairs so seamless but we absolutely need the countertop and backsplash to be installed which we are actually going to be tiling which i'm a little nervous but i i'm really excited for the outcome like i'm not exactly sure the process is gonna go but you guys know i'm gonna document it for you so let's get into it it is time to craft up a countertop. So we got this large sheet of plywood, a four by eight sheet. It's about three quarters of an inch thick and we are cutting it down to the countertop dimensions along with the piece that we want for the backsplash. Plywood's cut down, we're gonna see if it fits on top. It fits, it fits so good. We did a good job. Okay, countertop's done guys. One piece of plywood and we are good. We're gonna use these one by twos kind of as the braces on either side of the countertop. Screw these into the wall and into the studs in multiple places and then put the countertop on top. So I'm using a laser level and I'm actually using a laser level quite a bit for this countertop just to kind of create the straight line on that side and then use it and flip it in the opposite direction to create the straight line on the other side where we're able to screw the two one by twos into the wall, which are acting essentially as our shelf brackets. And then I'm using a one by two piece on the entire front there, which I'm screwing in to create a front face. Then in the back, we are actually going to be applying two more one by twos on either side to almost create a bump out of our backsplash because there's going to be a little shelf on the top and that's because there's electrical and some other pop outs behind this such as the actual water turn off valves and such like you can see on the left there so i didn't want to have to cover this completely so now they are accessible from the underside all right so here is where we're at as you can see the shelf is added up here we're basically building out a wood framework first so then we're going to tile over the top of and then justin just went outside and cut our front piece the face that's going to go across here and then whenever you need to access back here which we're kind of just leaving that open like this you just have to essentially pull out the washer or dryer i used a few screws to screw our backsplash into those one by twos we added onto either side I'm gonna lay out a row of our leash tiles just to see if hopefully we don't have to make any cuts. Ugh. 
This is what we call burning the midnight oil. Okay, we are outside with lamp light, courtesy of this lovely lamp right here. And we're cutting and mitering the tile. We are not letting this daylight savings get the best of us because it's like 4 p.m. and why is it dark? We don't know. So I have actually never tiled a vertical surface before. I've only ever done floors. This is my first time doing a backsplash. However, on the top here for our little shelf section, also for the front, we are going to want to have those mitered, which is probably the most annoying part of this entire countertop is having to miter those tiles. But once they are mitered, we just mixed up some quick set mortar and applied it on to each piece of liege tile and also the base and just kind of worked our way down with the checkerboard. These are four by four checkerboard or not checkerboard, but they're square tiles from Zia Tile. I will link them below for you if you are curious. Now on the left and right sides, as you can kind of see on this right side over here, we did have to cut them a little smaller so it was an even spacing on the right and left. And because these tiles are on the heavier side, we actually had to move from right to left. Instead of our working our way from the top of the backsplash down or from the bottom up, we actually had to work in rows like this because you needed these tiles to sit on top of each other while the mortar was on the backside to cure down. So I just kind of held each one for a minute or so until it held into place and at this point I was getting so excited I was loving the way that it was looking and the backsplash was pretty much complete so we had to work on the actual counter and the front lip itself was also mitered and then I cut the front face to two and a half inches tall in case you were curious which was just right above the new washer and dryer I found the armoire I found it last night you don't look happy <laughs> We just painted that other one. Just I know, we just no, painted. We'll use it, we'll use it downstairs. I know, we're gonna put it downstairs, but I found such a great one. My heart was pitter pattering last night when I found it, and I've been editing all morning um, part of this laundry room makeover, so sorry about my current appearance. Anyways, we're going to pick up this armoire at $75, and I'll also pop up one of my original inspo pictures that was in a video. I had shared this exact one in a video, and yeah, so we're going to pick it up. Look, you guys. Oh my gosh. It looks so stunning. Wow. What do you think, Justin? It's good. <laughs> it's really, really good. It is really, really, really good. It's perfect. Like, it looks like a nice primitive cabinet. Exactly what I was looking for. She even said she WD-40 the wheels, so they move. I love how all the wood handles are also on here. I'm back home and I'm about to move this piece out now. I liked it. I'm gonna take the doors back off because as you can see, the wood tones just don't match. And I tested a couple of stains out yesterday and nothing was just like matching up correct enough. So that piece I found on Facebook last night for $75. This is exactly what I was looking for for the space. It is absolutely perfect. I love it. And look how the top crown molding detail really nicely corresponds with the crown molding of the kitchen. Like they kind of mimic each other. And this just honestly couldn't be better. Let me share with you guys. I haven't even really looked at it yet. I just got it in. <gasps> Does the latch even work? Here's what the inside looks like here. And then up here, this is what I'm hoping will be the paper towel. Oh my gosh, can we see if a paper towel roll fits in here? Oh, look at that. Yep, looks good. Good morning. Here's the tile. And I just don't know, you know? I don't know. I'm liking it, but I'll say I think it's a little too contrasty. But the great thing is that I actually put these down as natural. These are natural tiles and I just stained them, each of them to kind of see what it could look like stained. And I'm thinking I'm gonna darken them so the contrast is a little less and it's just kind of a bit more of a subtle look. Thankfully the lighter tiles are unglazed so I'm able to color them before sealing. So I'm gonna color them a bit darker. You're really honestly probably not supposed to do this. And I bought a semi expensive tile and now I'm putting wood stain on it, so. We love DIY, but honestly, like, I need to darken it. Oh, this is looking so much better. 
So typically when you tile with Celise, you're supposed to get the same type of tile, but I'm someone that's extremely impatient. I didn't want to wait for a long time, so I actually just kind of opted for what Zia Tile had in stock, and they happened to have this glazed one and an unglazed option as well. So I went with that, and it totally worked because I was able to stain the unglazed to look like this. Plans for above the washer and dryer. This is currently still drying down before it's sealing. Now I want to put a bar across here that we could hang clothes on. We can put clothes that are drying on hangers and hang them above the countertop. Now I actually had a great realization the other day and that is there is a hallway directly behind this, a closet that has an old wooden bar in it. And we have all of our suitcases in there that stack up essentially to the closet bar. So we don't use it for hanging. So I'm gonna pull that bar out pop it right here. So let's go grab that. Here's the cedar closet I was talking about. Now, right behind this is the washer and dryer. So this is the rod, and then we have all of our suitcases down here. I had to move some out, but we are going to essentially pull this rod out because we don't really use it or hang anything in here. All right, the bar has been removed, and this is what it looks like. It was already part of the house, um, and it has this really pretty age and kind of patina to the bar already. And it pairs really nicely, as you can see, with the tile here. So this is going to be going up a little higher. And to secure this to either side are these little closet wooden pieces, which normally these aren't very pretty, but I'm going to stain them the same color as the bar, so it kind of just looks like little end caps on the bar. Let's see, do we have a clothing rod? It fit perfectly. Look at this, we have a little clothing rack, which is so exciting. And I love the repurposing of this bar from a room that I wasn't using it in. And then just added the end caps, which honestly they look um, pretty great. And then I added just a little liquid nails under before I screwed them in just to make sure they were really mounted on the wall. It's the final day of our laundry room makeover and I am ready. I didn't want to style last night because it was getting like the sun was already setting at like 3.34. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna wake up early. We're gonna style this while it's nice and bright and sunny. And I already have a lovely picture of some dried greenery. Now I love this dried greenery. I've had this for like months from Trader Joe's. I actually bought it as like fresh greenery. It dried in this exact picture and I left it there for like a month and I've just been swapping the water so it looks nice and clean. And they're literally fully like dried out, like they're crunchy at this point. You have that on like a nice kind of solid backdrop. It just has such a pretty like shape to it. I love how it kind of hangs a bit droopier and right next to that just this little wicker bottle um, that I got at a flea market I'm kind of a maximalist as you all know and I have this little French stool it has these like little bobbin legs on it which is so cute I got this at Olive Atelier a while back and I don't know there's something so just kind of charming about it sitting on top of the armoire my mom thinks I'm crazy for that but I like it like what do you guys think so I think I'm gonna leave it there for now the countertops are all complete, and I love the way that they look. I could not be happier with this. It's exactly what I wanted. Something just a little less contrasty than how I first applied them. I'm just gonna do some super minimal styling here also, just like kind of like staging as well, because I'm gonna add a basket that probably won't live here at all times. It probably will just be more of a clear countertop with maybe a couple decor pieces back there and some hangers for when you actually need to dry or hang up some clothes. This one in the center, just like this. I had this basket here that I thought would just be kind of a cute addition over on the side. A little studio vase bottle. I have these candlesticks and I just wanna add these Again, as more of like a statue-esque decor element. I want that up here just so that you can tell there's a shelf. This is where we have the ironing board, and this was all fully painted to match, of course. There's this trim piece that goes over, and I can't add art, well, I can't add art over the top of it, but I don't really want to because it's just gonna pop out so much. But I do have this really pretty rug that I got at a flea market. I had a bunch of you actually message me and say this is an Islamic prayer rug, and I did a little bit of research, 
and they are, and I even put it on my Instagram story, a lot of people said they're totally fine to decorate with, but just not to use them in a um, way, like as a bath mat. And I want to use it as a wall hanging because I think it's stunning. Now, I'm not going to use this side. I actually want to use this side. I love seeing all the woven knots in a rug. I think it's so cool. And the great thing about vintage rugs is they always do have two sides to them. They have the woven and knotted side and they normally have more of a brushed side. Now I love the more muted side on this one. So I'm actually gonna hang this just right here on the wall. It's like the most perfect size for this space. Behind me, this is kind of the back side of the laundry room. There is this window, which illuminates this entire space, which I love. Now, to the left of the window, I actually want to put this gorgeous oil painting. It's like a Belgian or Dutch oil painting. Look at the age on the back side. Like, it is so old, and it has these two little people. It's like me and Marie right here. Look at that. Do you see? So cute. And I just want to add this. Here, this is actually a vintage piece for sale on my website, but I might sell it to myself if it doesn't sell, honestly. But for now, it's going up here. I think we've made it to a point in this makeover where I can share with you the reveal of this laundry room. Now, I'm trying to block some of it because I don't want you to see all of it right now. It turned out so good. It meshes so well with the kitchen. I love the kind of interesting countertop over here. I need to do some laundry. This has been out of commission for a bit. So it's time to use those LG washer and dryer. But let me share it with you guys in three, two, one. Includes this laundry room transformation. I hope that you guys love this video. And yeah, this was actually my first ever laundry room makeover. I have never done one before. So, I mean, I think it's pretty good for a first one. Let me know which space you guys would like to see me conquer next in the home. We have so many more. It is crazy. I actually should do like a count or like a little like percentage run on the videos that can like be like percents of how complete the house is. But until then, make sure to check out LG. Um, I'll put the link to their incredible lighthouse factory at the top of the description box below if you wanna find out any more info and I will catch you all in my next one. Bye.